So Ben's symptoms came on when he was about three. It started out with um, a really abrupt change in him where I saw him uh, walking in circles and humming and doing this really um, kind of complex pattern walk in a circle. Um, and then he seemed to not um, be that aware of his surroundings anymore. Um, all of a sudden he was sensitive to lights and sounds. Um, he had um, a real separation anxiety, like a lot of trouble um, with me dropping him off at daycare, um, with me not walking with him from one room in our house to the other. We have a little house and it was still hard. Um, he wanted to sleep with me. He um, was doing some really different things um, that I think were sensory where he wanted to smell me a lot. So he would cuddle up into my neck and smell me or cuddle into my armpit and smell me. Um, he had a lot of trouble with sound as well. So um, all of a sudden the daycare that he'd been at and loved, um, he could barely tolerate. And he always had his hands on his ears um, and he was just overwhelmed a lot. So it was a real, like one day nothing and the next day something different. We were walking into Walmart that night and I'll never forget, like I, I can't even park on that side of Walmart anymore. It's so um, scary to me what happened. Um, he just went into this random hum. He's making like a sound and his eyes rolled up and he just wasn't there. All of a sudden he was, it was blank. Like there was nothing behind him. So I ended up with um, our local pediatrician who saw him in Emerge and he admitted him to the hospital. Uh, and he did um, all kinds of tests there. He said it didn't look like a seizure. Um, which is what they thought at first. They thought um, in the couple days from onset, he had started losing his words as well. So Ben was losing um, his words. He couldn't find the word he wanted or he'd replace it with something different. So if he went to say popsicle, because they had lots of popsicles at the hospital, they kept giving him. Um, if he'd say popsicle, he'd say the stick, the stick, the stick. And he just kept getting stuck on. Like he could picture it in his head, but he couldn't find the word. Um, all the while he's having more and more of these like blank out stares. So he, we went into the hospital, they did a MRI. Um, they did a CAT scan. I remember walking down the hall after that and the doctor saying, okay, good. No holes in his brain. Let's go do a lumbar puncture. So they did a lumbar puncture and they checked his spinal fluid. Um, they ran every single test they'd ever could, they could think of. Um, and nothing really came up. Um, he did have some EEGs and they were all abnormal. So when we, we were in the hospital for a full five days, when we left that hospital, um, the doctors brought us into this room and sat us down, it's my dad and I, and said, um, the way his EEGs look um, and the big change in him we think he might have a degenerative brain disorder and he might, um, and likely um, that's, you know, three to five years of life and you'll slowly watch him degenerate. Um, so we went home with that, which was really difficult. Um, like constant panic in your stomach, constant fear um, and all the while, he is still humming and having these periods of blanking out, um, not aware of what's going on around him. And just not even, um, not him. So uh, that was our first diagnosis was degenerative brain disorder. And um, we'll refer you to a neurologist. Um, it took about a week to go to a neurologist. So you sit with, um, my child's dying, slowly, uh, for a week. And then um, we went down to Mac. And the doctor that saw us there uh, said that his EEGs were a normal variant of childhood. Um, and that the person who read them in Owen Sound in our local hospital was incorrect. Um, and she said that uh, his movements 
were likely brought on by um, stress that he was having because I'd recently had a miscarriage um, and I was away from home one night. So he didn't know that I was pregnant. So we left, we left there um, and knowing that it didn't quite fit the picture. Uh, we went back to our pediatrician who uh, was very helpful and he said, have you ever heard of pandas? And I said, I have it. So I Googled it and every single symptom that was on that computer screen, um, he had every symptom, he had every single one. So, you know, we listed it all off. And so he, I went back to the neurologist um, that we'd seen in London and said, I, have you heard of pandas? I think this might be what he has. And he says, you're not allowed to talk about pandas in my office. Um, if you're a real doctor, pandas is like hearing nails on a chalkboard. Um, and perhaps your son um, just has a touch of autism. I remember I was so mad. I was just so mad because I figured it out, right? I knew exactly what it was. It was all there. And this is the head neurologist and he just was so dismissive and arrogant. I went online and started finding some Facebook groups and talking to other Ontario families with pandas kids and figuring out how they got help. I found Dr. Wilson. Dr. Isla Wilson through them. We'd finally found someone who knew what they were doing and someone who um, listened to what I was saying. Someone who didn't, I didn't leave saying, it doesn't fit anything. He doesn't fit. It doesn't make sense. The timeline doesn't make sense. He doesn't fit. Um, but I hear you and that sounds right and that happens and I can help and let's try this. And there was a plan. Three years, all I wanted was a plan, and I wanted someone to help. So it was quite a, a wonderful thing to meet her. Um, we've been working with her for a year, and he is so far, so far from where he was. It's incredible. He still has regular flares, um, but that horrible uh, rage that he used to have, that was so unlike my silly boy, uh, is gone. Uh, his OCD is way down. Uh, his anxiety comes and goes, but is so much improved. Um, his uh, focusing at school, they see it. Whenever there's strep around, they see it. Um, he dips down, but he comes back up again. And he comes back fast. And I finally learned that the things that I thought he um, had missed or hadn't learned when he was flaring. Um, it's all there. He's, it's actually there. He, um, he can do it even though when he's flaring he can't do it. So it's so reassuring to see him like that and to know that, um, that he's not lost all the things that I thought he had.